Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the stream. We have just about five minutes before tonight's Advent of Code puzzle unlocks. We're on day nine now. Uh, as with every uh, stream, we're working on solving these puzzles in C++. Uh, you know, welcome to everyone who's joining. You are always welcome to ask questions in the chat, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you have missed any previous day's streams, you can always find them uh, at my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash spoonboy42. There's also a link down in the description. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube right now uh, as a replay, you can, uh, you know, of course, find all the previous streams in my channel. You can also go ahead and um, watch the live streams that happen nightly. Uh, we kick them off just a little before 9 p.m. Pacific time on Twitch at twitch.tv slash spoonboy42, link down in the description. So uh, last night, we, um, for the day, for uh, day eight's puzzle, we had kind of this uh, little virtual machine um, that had, you know, a very simple uh, kind of assembly language that just has three instructions. And uh, jumps are always unconditional, so, you know, the control flow is deterministic. But it's still, you know, uh, kind of one of those fun puzzles where you're kind of, where you're simulating a different computer and figuring out something about it. So, um, so yeah, that was kind of fun. I, it, it reminded me a little bit of uh, last year. Uh, a lot of puzzles used this... Um, sort of imaginary machine language called int code. And, you know, you kept adding, building up features day by day and adding to it. So I don't know if we're going to see something like that again this year, building up this little virtual machine language and, be, and um, you know, adding more and more features to it and using it each day. Uh, if we do see something like this uh, building from day to day, then, you know, we will probably um, take out some of this code that just lives in the day eight solutions right now and make some uh, shared functions or classes uh, to represent how we deal with um, programs in this little language. But uh, I guess we'll see. We'll find out uh, when we see tonight's puzzle. Uh, so in, we have about two minutes to go in preparation for tonight's puzzle, as we do every night. Let's make our little uh, skeleton. of our solution program. So just the minimalist C++ program there and make our build file so that the Basil build system that we use knows how to build it. Okay, then we'll go ahead and run it here using that custom LLVM build config I talked about on some of the previous streams. Okay. All right, we are all good to go with that. We have a little less than a minute to go before the puzzle unlocks here. I think I figured out um, what this image is. I think that this is actually like a v kind of like a view from space. You can see the curve of the Earth here. And we started at the North Pole and it's uh, tracking our route as we go uh, on, our, on our vacation. So, you know, we, we took the toboggan, we sledded down to the airport and then, you know, we went to the regional hub and we'll go, you know, place to place. This will track all of our our jet setting and globe trotting around the world in this picture as we go. Just a few more seconds now. Okay. Ooh, open data port on the little screen in front of you. 
I see these USB things uh, when, like on flights too. I always, I always a little suspicious about plugging into them. <laughs> oh, paper clips, sure. All right, so get a series of numbers. Exchange masking addition system, Xmas. Ah. Okay, so we're going to try and decipher an encrypted message, it looks like. Let's get a preamble of 25 numbers. After that, each number should be the sum of any two of the 25 immediately previous numbers. Two numbers will have different values, and there might be more than one such possible pair. Okay. So, so 26 numbers, 45, and the first number, no longer an option, as it is more than 25 numbers ago, was 20. Okay. Find the first number in the list after the preamble, which is not the sum of the two. Okay, so we're going to have a sliding window of um, of possible sums, basically, uh, for two different numbers, and we need to find the first number uh, that doesn't satisfy that condition, that it's the sum of two of the previous numbers in that window up to 25 beforehand. So... We'll call our class Xmas window to represent uh, the state of the, the window of the cipher. Uh, and so inside this, We'll have a queue. Well, so here. Hmm. So, so there are multiple ways we can approach this. Like, we can actually. Um, We could do it. We can we can do this this yearly, where we pre-compute all the sums of two numbers, or we can do it um, on demand, where we look at the next number in the stream and we uh, see if that uh, and, and we try and find the pair that satisfies it. Um, doing it eagerly, you know, means that, you know, a lot of the, the sum of pairs is valid uh, window to window. Uh, but the data structures are going to be a little more complicated. So I'm just going to do an on demand calculation and see how far we get with that. So um, have our window size, which is um, how many numbers are in the window. And then we'll use the deck container, which is double-ended queue. Uh, this is a C++ container that's it's efficient to insert and remove on both ends of it, because we're going to keep shifting our window, removing stuff from the front and adding stuff on the end. So we want a container with that, with that property.
Let's look at our IO routines. I think we have something that just reads a bunch of integers, yeah. Okay. It's gay. So we'll just we'll just pass those in as vector as a vector of integers. I guess we don't necessarily have to uh, to make this deck a member of the class. Uh, it can kind of it can it can just be yeah it can just be something temporary to this function. I mean honestly the whole thing could be done in a function, but. Eh. I don't know. Um, I'll go ahead and make it stateful. We might need it. We might need some to do something trickier in part two. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is um, check that the size of the sequence. Oh, we need to include our our check function. greater than or equal to the window size. Then we'll go ahead and fill up our window with the fir with um, the first, you know, whatever n elements the window size elements are. Uh, did my, oh no, it looks like my, uh, my camera is frozen. Um, I guess I'll keep talking, but you're just going to see my frozen face, I'm afraid. But, you know, the important thing is, you know, we're watching uh, what is happening in the code window. I might go ahead and just uh, drop my face out of the view. There we go. Um, so we will go from sequence... dot begin up to the 25th element, or, or, you know, the window size element, because we're going to make it flexible enough that it can handle different window sizes. Uh, that should be sequence.begin plus window size. We don't want to go past the end. OK. So now we are going to look for something that um, that doesn't uh, satisfy the condition of uh, it being two, the sum of two things in the window. So we are going to start from that same position. So we'll say So what we're doing here is now we're starting uh, at the first element past the past the uh, preamble, and we're going all the way to the end of the sequence in our search. So now uh, we will write a little helper method in here. To see if the next number is valid. So we'll say we'll have we'll have two nested for loops where we go through the outer and the the, the um, all the possible pairs of numbers in the window and uh, see if they add up to the next number. So we'll go th from window dot begin. And you'll see why I'm using iterators here in a minute instead of a range-based for loop, because they'll give us an easy way to make sure that we're not um, using the same number in the sequence twice. And this, 
you know, I'm just going to copy and paste this because inner is going to be very, very similar. And so we'll say for inner, all these things. Okay. Now, uh, if outer and inner point to the same element, we want to skip over that because it always has to be two different numbers in the sequence that uh, add up to the next number in order for uh, it to be valid. Now we say if outer plus inner, it, it, we dereference these. So if the actual numbers that are being pointed to equal that next value, then we return true. It is valid. We can make that parameter a const. But if we search through the whole window and don't find anything that meets those conditions, then we'll return false. So if the next uh, value is not valid, then that's what we actually want to return as our answer. So um, but if the next value is valid, then we just shift the whole sequence forward. So we do window, we will pop the front element off of it and push the uh, the next element from the input sequence onto the window. And then here we will check fail uh, if we go through the whole sequence and we don't find anything that violates those conditions. Okay, uh, I think we've got something that can solve the problem now and we just need to write some IO to bring the data into the program. Let's, uh, hmm, you know, I'm going to make the program take three parameters tonight so that, you know, one of them will be the file name that we're reading in, but uh, another one will be the window size. So we'll say, it'll be, uh, One, it's not standard in, it's just in. IO stream in there for C out. Okay. So I think that this is our solution for part one. Let's just add its dependencies. We need our util stuff. We need abstail strings, and that should be it. So we'll copy from a previous day and just edit it as we usually do. Somebody once told me that uh, all make files are descended from a common ancestor, and 
Although these are build files, not make files, that is kind of true in this case. Uh, let's get our test input uh, here from the, the website. And this version of it, uh, we're working with length, a preamble length 5 for this example. So put that in as an argument. And it says that the first number that doesn't follow the rule is 127. So that's uh, correct according to the website. Let's get our actual um, puzzle input now. Okay, oh gosh, we have some big freaking numbers. This makes me a little nervous and thinks that maybe we should be using uh, int 64s. You know what? The window size doesn't need to be, but th you know, these are big enough that, let's just uh, let's make those integer, those, um, Let's just make these things a little a little beefier cuz those are some big numbers. Okay. Now, I just rerun on the initial test input. Yeah, still works the same. The 9.txt with a uh, window size of 25. Okay, it says this number is the answer. Let's see. I am still, yep. Let's see if we got it right. All right. Yet another great brute force solution. So final step to break the encryption relies on the invalid number you just found. You must find a contiguous set of at least two numbers in your list, which sum to the invalid number from step one. So we consider the above example. So this adding up all of the numbers. Okay. Okay. Easy enough. We will copy our, I think uh, we'll copy our part one solution to part two and uh, start cracking. Start cracking literally. We're cracking encryption here to take over the in-flight entertainment system. Isn't that really the dream to be able to board a plane and go to a place and crack the in-flight entertainment system? There's a lot of wish fulfillment going on um, in this puzzle this year, I think. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, for part two, we're starting with the same basic thing, except uh, you know we've got our find first and valid. We now uh, need to Call it crack code. You well, know, we're going to need to use a. Uh, well, so so I realized that you know, like find first and valid is going to have its own state, but. Uh, yeah, actually, we're not even going to really touch the state. I, I will probably clean up these classes because I don't really think that they needed to be stateful classes in the first place. But um, our crack code implementation isn't going to touch the window anyway. It's just going to look for things in the sequence. So I think we're fine. So first thing we'll do is...
get the solution to part one essentially by uh, calling the find first invalid method. And then what we will do is look through the sequence and try and find uh, a contiguous range where if we sum up all the numbers together in that contiguous range, we get our invalid number. So we'll just iterate through all the possible beginnings. And then we will iterate through the possible ends. It doesn't really make sense to, uh, I mean, I guess, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, we can start it at range, we can start it at range start and still, and this will still work properly. And so, Oh yeah, these should all be in 64, shouldn't they? We will use... There's a standard sum algorithm, I believe, in the standard library, or do we just have to use standard accumulate? Okay, yeah. So what accumulate will do is we will uh, tell it to sum over the range from range start to range end. Using zero as the initial sum. Now, If that sum is equal to that target invalid number, we will we're gonna write something called sum min max we that will uh, just work over that range. We're not gonna actually write, we're gonna write that in just a minute, but I wanna finish this thought here where uh, we're iterating over the range. So if it's exactly equal to invalid, we're good. If the sum is greater than that invalid number, then we should stop because there's no possible way that adding more numbers, because these are all positive numbers, uh, there's no possible uh, point to searching anymore because um, we, you know, have already we, we've already exceeded what we're searching for. We could probably also do like some subtraction for a start of for for the difference between range start, but I think this ought to be efficient enough. Um, yeah, so this break will just break us out of this outer loop, and we'll move on to trying the next range start. Then we'll check fail down here if we didn't actually find anything. So some min max will say. That's going to return an int 64t. So the actual class here is going to be vector of int 64t const iterator. Begin and end.
and we're going to just return the sum of the min and max of those. I guess we didn't really need to make this a helper function. It's going to be really simple, but... Oh, these going to give us... Are min and max going to give us iterators? Yeah, they are. Okay, well, we'll just dereference them. Oh, you know what we actually want is we want, um, I think we want min element and max element, not min and max, yeah. Still want to dereference them though because they do return iterators. Okay, I think that, uh, I mean that, I don't think, uh, that this should be our solution for part two. Instead, uh, only instead of find first invalid, we want it to uh, crack the code. So let us build our part two solution here. And we will test it out on the test input that the website gave us. So, um, we're going to use that test input with a window size of only 5. And it gives 62, which is the correct answer. Okay. So here is our answer according to uh, to our program. Let's see if we got it right. All right, that is another successful solution. Uh, this went pretty smoothly tonight. Um, what I would say is, uh, you know, looking back over the solution, uh, it was probably a little bit of overkill to put this into a class because honestly like this window really is proper is only used um, in uh, well it's used in first and valid and next valid I mean it but it, it's but next valid is just a helper function for find first and valid and crack code, yeah, I mean, I might not have put this whole thing into a class, or if I did make it a class, I might have structured the member data differently. Um, I think probably, uh, you know, one important optimization here is just that if the sum is greater than invalid, we break, because they're, um, at, because at that point, uh, there's no point searching anymore. So we go from... Um, what would be, you know, I mean, it's still like potentially worst case n, -squ n squared search, but I have a feeling that this optimization is saving a lot of time. Like if I took it out, let's see what happens runtime wise. Yeah. Okay. So it's still got the right answer, but it, it took like a second. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, still, C++ is really fast, you know, like, like we, we could still, you know, brute, fork, brute force it without this optimization. I think you could actually make uh, this even faster by instead of start, um, you know, always using accumulate um, and basically starting the sum for each possible sub range from zero and accumulating up, we could add stuff onto the we could add stuff onto range end one by one 
And then when we get over the sum, we subtract the first one and subtract it one at a time. And so then we have sort of a, um, instead of having our, the start of our range always move forward by one and then try range, try the end, you know, zero, one, two, three, however many elements more past the end there and trying to and computing the sum we could actually just have a moving window where we move the end forward and then when we get above the number that we're searching for we move the beginning forward until we get below and we keep on going until we get equals that would actually be uh that would actually be linear complexity i think so i think i I might actually try and uh, write a solution that way, but honestly, you know, this search is plenty fast enough and we got the correct results. So uh, I may clean this up a little bit before I upload it to GitHub, but as always, uh, the code is going to go up into my GitHub repo. Uh, you can see it uh, down in the, the description text. That's uh, github.com slash Craig dash Chasser slash AOC 2020. Uh, as always, the video replays are on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash spoonboy42. And Twitch streams are at twitch.tv slash spoonboy42. Thank you uh, again for everybody joining us tonight, uh, having some fun working through these puzzles. Uh, I'm sorry about the technical difficulties with the camera. I will try and get those sorted out. But I will uh, see you all again next night for another puzzle. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye.